my name is John Thorne. I'm one of the product managers at AGA Video Systems. In this overview video, we'll be covering the KeyPro. What is KeyPro? KeyPro is a tapeless video recorder capable of recording 10-bit 422 video on removable media. It records to Apple's ProRes 422 and ProRes 422 HQ QuickTime compression schemes. These are extremely useful because they have a direct and easy workflow with Apple's Final Cut Studio suite of applications. Let's look at the connectivity on KeyPro first. Let's look at the wide range of connectivity available on KeyPro. KeyPro features HDMI in and out, which is great for connecting to consumer and prosumer cameras. HDMI features the ability to have audio and video on one cable, but not timecode. SDI, for many of the professional and broadcast products on the market, can carry video, audio, and in some cases, even timecode. Component analog in and out is capable of working with both SD and HD legacy analog sources. A composite out jack for simple monitoring to a number of legacy devices. Balanced analog audio in and out via XLR connectors. The inputs, like a camera, even feature line, mic, and phantom power. Unbalanced RCA analog audio in and out because not every device features balanced analog audio. LTC timecode in and out so that you can synchronize to a wide variety of timecode devices on set. Let's take a look at the front UI of KeyPro. From left to right, KeyPro features VU meters, which give you an idea of the audio levels that you're recording. Note that the adjustment knobs below are only for the analog audio inputs, not for embedded sources like SDI or HDMI. In those cases, you want to have those devices have proper audio levels before feeding to KeyPro. In order to make adjustments to the analog audio, you can simply push in the knob, make an adjustment, and then lock it back into place. The next items are the buttons. The status, the config, and the media buttons are all the different menu options that you'll use to configure KeyPro. The rewind button for transport controls, the play button, fast forward, stop or pause, and record. In order to adjust the menu parameters, the select up and down buttons navigate you through the various menu options and adjust actually makes adjustments in each of those parameters. The delete clip button is a simple and quick button for deleting a clip you've recorded that you don't find useful. The slot button is for properly mounting and unmounting the media. You'll also notice a headphone jack and a volume control knob similar to the analog audio adjustment knobs that we already spoke about. Again, push, adjust, and then lock back into place. The on-off button and power button is safety so that one simple click does not power down KeyPro. You have to hold in the button in order to perform a shutdown. Express Card 34 slots, there are two with LED indicators to note whether media has been inserted or is in use. Finally, the KeyPro storage module. This is a flexible recording media which allows for well over two hours of ProRes 422 recording. In order to properly remove the device, we simply push in on the media release button and slide the storage out. Notice that when we want to properly insert the media, we want to note that we have the manufacturer's label facing down and the AJA logo facing up. Also note the guides along the sides of the unit and the guides inside of KeyPro. Line these up, use both hands, and slide the storage module back into place using both thumbs. We've talked about the connector side and the operator side of KeyPro. Now let's talk about the rear of KeyPro where the actual power supply is connected. We have a four pin industry standard XLR style connector. This way we can connect to a wide variety of batteries and our own supplied AC power supply unit. If we look at the bottom of KeyPro, you'll notice that we have flexible tap holes that allow us to actually mount KeyPro to the KeyPro exoskeleton. Let's look at that next. The optional KeyPro exoskeleton is a very robust and rigid frame that the actual KeyPro sits inside of. It's made out of extruded aluminum, so it's very strong. 
You'll also notice that in this particular example, it features optional rod end plates that allow us to use user supplied 15 millimeter rods, which are standard in the industry. So this means a wide variety of accessories can be used with KeyPro and the exoskeleton. You'll notice at the top of the unit, we actually have a sliding base plate. This allows us to balance the camera from front to rear. Next, let's actually make a complete configuration using KeyPro and the exoskeleton. One of the considerations when we design the KeyPro exoskeleton is how it could work best with camcorders. Considering that camcorders often have accessories on the front, like map boxes and follow focuses, as well as hot shoe type accessories like wireless microphone packs or even long shotgun microphones and shoe mounts, we decided that the best place to put the KeyPro exoskeleton was actually below the camcorder. Next, we're gonna mount the KeyPro exoskeleton to the tripod. So the first thing we'll do is we'll actually take the tripod sliding plate and remove it. And of course, it has a threaded screw that we're gonna to use to tap into the bottom of the KeyPro exoskeleton. So you'll notice there's several holes. There's a guide pin hole, a standard video threaded hole, and a film style threaded hole. So we're gonna line this up and simply tighten it down. And to make certain it's secure, I'm actually gonna take a screwdriver and tighten it down a bit more. And then we wanna line this up and slide it into place on the tripod. So now that we've anchored the KeyPro exoskeleton in place, let's actually anchor the KeyPro inside of the exoskeleton. So we'll slide it into place, and we can actually use the power supply at the back of the unit to line it up so that we can actually see where we need to thread in our screw. These screws are secure enough that you can actually move the unit around quite a bit and not have to worry about it coming out of the exoskeleton. So with it secured in place, the next thing we're going to do is actually remove the sliding base plate at the top of the exoskeleton by simply twisting the knob at the back counterclockwise, sliding the sliding plate free, and then we're going to mount the camera to this sliding plate and put it back onto the KeyPro exoskeleton. AJ provides two different size threaded screws so you can connect to a wide variety of cameras. Line up the guide pin and the screw on the bottom of the camera and then just finger tighten the screw into place. Once you get it started, in order to finish it, you should really use a screwdriver to properly tighten it down. And once it's tightened down, simply take the unit and you're going to slide it back onto the exoskeleton. Slide it into place, and again, we can use this to balance and then we'll tighten it with the locking knob at the rear. The next thing we'll do is connect the power to the four pin connector. Next, let's make our audio and video connections to KeyPro. In the case of this particular camera, it actually features SDI, which means we can use one single BNC cable to connect the camera to KeyPro and provide audio, video, and even time code over that single cable. Now that we've made our audio and video connections, we can actually power up the camera and the key pro.